Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a 2006, uh, was it Land Rover Discovery? Matt? LR3. LR3. Um, drove here from New York City about five hours away, and main customer complaint is uh, the radio and the navigation screen doesn't work. Now, this car obviously has multiple issues and it has 249,000 miles on it which is very impressive so first thing hook up a scanner and do a full vehicle scan well the think tool pros fell on its face it was doing the full health check and when it got to the instrument panel cluster it said uh, nope it kicked you know just kick me out so I'm like okay now the little Autel here, I just use this for TPMS, but it can do a full code scan. It actually went through and completed the health report. So let's uh, let's just look at the trouble codes. There are a lot of trouble codes. Um, so powertrain control module, lost communication with all-terrain module, incorrect immobilizer, KOK, TCM, lost communication with instrument cluster, permanent code there, interesting. Uh, gear ratios, uh, RCM, restraint control module, instrument panel cluster, so the scanner, this one, could talk to it. We have 10 codes, high speed CAN, medium speed CAN, lost communication with uh, ride level control module because this thing has been converted to coil springs which makes it more reliable. Um, intermittent lost communication with park assist, tire pressure, Lost communication with audio unit. Permanent code there. Let's see, battery disconnected. Parking brake control module. Again, can't talk to the instrument cluster. Tire pressure module. Intermittent blah blah blah. BCM. Front lighting module. Uh, temperature, let's see here, ride level control module, don't care about that. <laughs> Transfer case control module, da, da, da. vehicle dynamics. So this thing is full of trouble codes, obviously, you know, that's to be expected. So let's... Uh, Let's save the report and then I want to clear all the trouble codes out. Save this page. No, oh, no. I want to save all data in a PDF. CLR3. Okay. Now we do quick erase. That will erase all the codes and all the modules. And then we'll see where this goes. So a little bit of history uh, from the owner on this, on this truck. He said, one day he left the passenger window open and it rained. Right, Matt? Rainstorm. And so the window stopped working, right? Window stopped working. OK. So and, but the nav and the radio still worked. At that believe, point, I believe so. Okay. I believe so. Okay, so you went to fix the window. It was easier said than done, right? Easier said than done. Ended up after splicing wires, taking the front seat out, um, putting a new, you know, um, actually, I hadn't changed the battery at that point. Putting mm -hmm. a new um, window motor in turned out uh, to be a, uh, turned out to be a fuse. Okay, so, a a fuse. so end of the day, replace the fuse, right? And a window works. Window works. But go in the car a couple of days later because it's not my daily driver, <laughs> and I turn it on, and the nav screen and the radio have no life in them. Okay, okay, great. So that, that's the history of the vehicle. Uh, obviously, we're worried about powers and grounds, so my first check would be look at a, uh, a wiring diagram for the nav and the radio and check fuses first. If the fuses are okay, we'll go for, you know, we'll 
take these out of the dash and check for powers and grounds at the module itself. So now after rescanning, let's do report. So fault to instrument panel cluster, lost communication with audio unit, that's obvious because the audio unit is dead in the water, and then BCM has a couple permanent codes. Okay, so that's not really all that helpful. Now let's, uh, let's look up some wiring diagrams. All right, so Here's the radio circuit wiring diagram. This is our audio head unit. This is our touch screen display. Down here we have our navigation system module. Um, I mean it has three pages of stuff. You can have a tuner, an amplifier, telephone. Uh, there's the amplifier under the seat. Okay, that's all fine and good. But let's focus on powers and grounds here. So fuse 53, this is hot at all times. This purple and blue wire feeds battery power to all these modules. There's the audio control module, the touch screen display, then it splices off and goes to our navigation system module. So that's battery power. And then there's this infotainment relay that when that turns on and the control is right through the um, you know the audio head unit then fuse 58 becomes hot and then we get power it's called accessory power to our touch screen to our navigation system module and all the other modules so my question is how does the radio, the audio unit, know when your key is on and you push the power button, it should ground this entertainment control wire and everything should, you know, come online. Do we see any other powers and grounds to this audio control module? Let's look really carefully. Let's see, where does that red wire go? microphone telephone microphone there so V bat that's battery power is ground so it looks like these modules might be turned on by just the can signal and then you push the button and it comes on because there's no key you know ignition source like you would find on a normal car right here entertainment control that wire should be grounded when this module is woken up by you know whatever the system and when you push the power button so if we find this infotainment relay we could just you know jump these contacts together let's check fuse 53 that would be my first check and then check fuse 58 when we try to power up the audio unit see if that turns on or not and go from there. So right by the passenger's footwell is our central junction box. So first, let's do fuse 53. Should be a 15 amp battery positive. And fuse 53 is right there. Now it doesn't look original. Did, did, have you replaced these fuses already? Okay, so it's hot on that side it's hot on that side so battery power fuse looks fine next one fuse 58 10 amp should turn on when we try to turn this audio system on so 58 10 amp that's this one right here nothing on there nothing on there not surprising so that relay must not be being turned on keys on you, know, you can push this button all day long nothing really works so let's go to that relay and see you know relay is always a good place to start because you can check the control side and the load side 
So this infotainment relay in the central junction box, I want to find the actual location of that relay. All data is nice enough to give us a picture of half of the fuse box, but the relays are actually down here. So and it says relays R1 through R5. R5 is entertainment systems. Okay, well that's that's helpful because the relays in the box are actually labeled, you know, R1 through R5. They're kind of hiding in this corner. And see R4, R5, R2, R3, and that must be R1. Yep. So R5 is this green one down here. So let's pull it out and do some checks right at the relay pins. Now I see that the relay itself is not original because the other ones seem to be Ford parts. And this one, if I can squeeze it out of here, and just take it out. So this is a Hyundai Kia relay. I mean, it's four pin, should be a pretty standard issue. Let's check for powers at these pins. So, let's see if I can get from the bottom here. Yep. So we do have a power on the load side feed, and we should have a power, yep, on the control side. Okay, good. Let me just jump the two load side pins together, these two with a fuse jumper and see if anything changes. Okay, so we got some AES wave adapters installed in the two slots for the load side. Let's just plug it in and see what happens. There we go, we got our nav screen back, Land Rover. Um, so that's fine. So we gotta figure out why this radio unit is not grounding out the control pin for this relay. It's a con control side problem. So the radio is not turning on everything else. So we're narrowing it down. We might have to take this radio out and see what's going on with it because it seems to be dead in the water. Well, the owner can take this thing out in about two seconds. Wow, awesome. That makes my job a lot easier. So now we have all the wires back here. Let's uh, use the test light to check for powers and grounds. Okay, great, so the radio is out. Let's just check with our test light that we have a good power on the B plus wire, and we do. Let's also check that we have a good ground on this gray and black. Let's see, that goes to, no, that's steering wheel control module. Under right side of headliner, okay. Pin one. It's going to be a black wire on this same connector. So let's check that this is a ground. We can just jump a test light across these. Okay, so power and ground, battery positive and ground is fine at our radio head unit. So the only other ignition input, there's no separate input. We just have to measure the voltages on these communication lines. That's the only other thing that can wake this module up, I think. I don't see anything else. We could check this uh, red and let's see, red and blue wire right here. We can ground that through a test light with the relay in and see if our nav system comes on and then we'll be sure about wiring integrity at least for that relay circuit. Okay, so through our test light, it's connected to battery ground. Let's go right for this. Yep, I heard the relay click. Let's energize it and see if our nav, yep, the nav screen came on. So the relay's good, the nav screen is good, the wiring to the radio is good. We got power, we got ground, but the radio does not turn on and it doesn't ground the relay. So we're getting really close. It's either gonna be a bad radio or the communication line. So let's get a scope on these and make sure that the communication lines are good all the way to the radio. All right, so this is the last electrical check. We're on the two can wires on the radio. Let's turn the key on. 
and make sure our oh my connection my back probe is uh, a little finicky here make sure you have good connections let me uh, make that a little better so <laughs> this is our data here and I swear I'm touching the metal on that wire and look what's happening to our signal now is it my back probe or is there a broken wire here for the can let me uh, let me try another back probe okay so I think it was just my back probe got a little excited so we'll mark this one as needs to be repaired it sucks when you uh, when your equipment tries to let you down that's why you have to check your equipment before making a call so let's bump these scales down and I mean the radio is completely completely dead there's nothing happening we have good packets we can unplug the actual connector and see if anything changes oh. so basically that those signals are coming from the car not from the radio so the radio is just not waking up it's it's dead okay nothing changes when we plug this in we can talk to try to talk to it with the scanner again audio unit so let's back out of here system selection audio front control module okay it'll try to talk but I'm pretty sure it's, it says communication error with vehicle ECU so that's about it let's try the other radio and see if it's any different this is the eBay replacement and the other one is the one that doesn't work so I think I think we need another radio that's just the way it is uh, how much was the eBay radio Matt? 200, 200 bucks and supposedly it was good when sold but I don't know maybe these radios have a uh, you know a history of failing so before condemning this radio I'm just reading up uh, the information on an integrated head unit and right here this is key the IHU is woken up by CAN bus activity and is not woken up from the ignition auxiliary position the IHU is the bus master for the most system and contains a timing master for the most system now my question is this instrument cluster it had communication codes in it but our you know the CAN lines are fine the signals are good so the wiring integrity is fine but which module tells the integrated head unit to wake up could it be the instrument cluster um, just do a little more reading uh, pull up a diagram of the information bus and just basically make sure that none of the other codes in the other modules would cause this problem so in here on the information bus diagram there's only one high-speed network thank goodness and everything's on it so instrument cluster you see our audio head unit temperature control air suspension everything there's the uh, engine control module transmission control module transfer case so in this case if, you know all the modules are on the network we can talk to all of them you know with the right scanner and that's pretty much it I don't see any other reason the radio wouldn't turn on. So, once the owner gets a another replacement radio and it works, we'll uh, confirm the repair. But for now, that's where we have to end it. So, thanks all for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. A little bonus footage. The uh, the Think Tool Pros here actually went through all the modules and scanned them without getting hung up very interesting now I did update the software update the you know the little dongle and stuff like refreshed it and it seems to be happy now let's just record all these codes and see uh, the really nice thing here is we can see the the networks other scanners don't have that feature that's 
why I wanted to use this one. And um, let's see what we can talk to. Okay, ECM IPC, lost communication with audio unit. So they're trying to talk to the audio unit, it's just not turning on, not responding. And all these are good. Okay. BCM lost communication with instrument cluster control module. Medium speed CAN communication bus. I don't know why the instrument cluster is fussing about that. But let's look at our map again. Let's clear DTCs. I'm just wondering which one of these, I think the ACM is the audio control module. And it says it's on a different network. Okay. So let's do the report after the code clear. IPC is saying four problems exist. Medium speed CAN communication bus. Lost communication with parking assist control. Altering control module and lost communication with audio unit. And the BCM says lost communication with instrument cluster control module. Okay. Now, right here, so we have high speed CAN, instrument cluster is on the high speed CAN. On the medium speed CAN, <clears throat> let's look at the bus diagram one more time and see who is the gateway, who translates between high speed and medium speed. Because our audio control module, right there, you try to enter it, and it'll say, no bueno. Let me, let me just take a look at that diagram one more time because the BCM or the instrument panel cluster was setting that medium speed fault code. I didn't like that. Okay, so this map is very, very handy. So medium speed can, we have the BCM, the HVAC, the TPMS, uh, the audio control module which is offline and this parking aid assist control module which is fine. Now on the wiring diagram I was incorrect in saying there's just one network. There's actually two. Just the wiring colors look very similar. So pin 6 and 14 on the DLC those are that's the high speed CAN and you can see those go to the instrument cluster yellow brown and yellow and black wires go to steering angle sensor air suspension uh, let's see parking brake control module rear diff our restraints are on there and then engine control transmission transfer case okay now all the other modules here are on the medium speed can which is actually pins 11 and 3 on the DLC and the instrument cluster that's the gateway that translates between high speed and medium speed networks. Now what's on the medium speed? Instrument cluster, audio audio unit, that's the one we're worried about. Temperature control module, that's online. TPMS is fine, parking aid control module is fine, and central junction box, which is the BCM, which is fine. So if you back out and rescan it, I just did that, and we do one more report, we'll see what codes are stored. So lost communication with the all-terrain control module, that's probably the air suspension which is disconnected. Lost communication with audio unit, so the IPC setting that code. And there's nothing else here. So that medium speed CAN code, not worried about it. The instrument cluster is trying to 
do its thing, you know, wake up the audio unit. It can't, but everything else you can see is online. So again, no network issues here. It's just the radio. Can't turn on and the most, so the radio is the master for the most, so we don't see anything else here like the amplifier, telephone, whatever, TV. Um, so we're done with this diagnosis. That makes me feel better that we're calling the right, uh, you know, the right part here. Because when people drive from far away, they want a guaranteed answer. And we go above and beyond to prove it, even though it might take an extra hour or so. Um, this is, you know, guaranteed as long as he gets a brand new radio. That's the only way I can guarantee this repair. If he gets another eBay radio and doesn't work, well, you know, it might it might be junk. So that's it for this one. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you for next time. Bye-bye. A moment of truth. Dead nav, dead radio, replacement radio. Let's see if it works. I'm going to turn the car off. Let's do replacement radio. That should work. It's going to be a little tricky. Well, actually, let me just get it hooked up and then I'll come back when I turn it on. Well, Ivan, I don't even need to turn the car on. It already came back to life. That is impressive, my friend. Let's see if we have. And we have sound. Ivan, you're the man. Thanks, buddy.